XXXFX. Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to the 10th episode of my 17 part series on getting a great vocal sound. This series is a crash course on best practices you need to know to get good results in a home recording environment from performance to recording to mixing. These next eight videos are all about mixing. If you haven't already seen the section on recording vocals, however, please go do so. Anyway, there are several things I'd like to go over before I get into any mixing tips and tricks. So let's get started. What is sound? To get the most out of the rest of this series, you need a basic understanding of the characteristics of sound and how they're represented digitally. As such, before I talk about mixing, I'll explain some general audio concepts to get you started. So get ready for some science. Sound is our perception of the patterns of air that press against our ears as a result of the vibration of objects around us. For example, I have a glass of water. When I place the glass against my coaster, both the coaster and the glass vibrate. The vibration causes ripples in the air around the glass and the coaster. These ripples travel through the air to my ears, and my ears read that particular pattern of air movement as sound. The ripples of air are called waves. All waves have the same characteristics, including the two that are important to us now, amplitude and frequency. Amplitude. Amplitude is the distance from the resting or zero cross point of the wave to the highest peak of the wave. This amplitude is what we perceive as a sound's loudness or volume. The bigger the amplitude, the louder the sound. Now you've probably heard of the measurement decibels. In acoustics, the decibel, or dB, is used to measure sound pressure levels, or SPL. The dB-SPL scale is roughly based on our perception of loudness, with zero dB being the quietest sound a person is able to hear, and 120 dB being the loudest sound a person can hear before experiencing pain and instant hearing damage. However, this scale is useless in a DAW, because the audio in your DAW is completely separate from the volume control of your speakers. Instead of measuring actual sound pressure levels, your DAW measures the amplitude of an audio signal based on a predetermined reference point. In your DAW, amplitude is measured in decibels full scale, or dBFS. The scale starts from 0 dB, which is the greatest amplitude that your DAW can tolerate without clipping, and goes down into the negative numbers. So if a vocal's peak volume level is minus 4 dB, that means that it's 4 dB less than the 0 dB ceiling. I will say this though, decibels are logarithmic units. This basically means that they don't add together in the same way that, say, inches or liters do, which can make them somewhat confusing to work with. I've put a link in the description to the Wikipedia article on decibels if you'd like to know more. For everyone else, just know that in home recording, decibels are a useful measurement of relative loudness. Frequency. A sound wave is a type of repeated pattern of movement called an oscillation. You're probably very used to oscillations. You know those fans in your house that rotate back and forth? They're called oscillating fans because this back and forth cycle is an oscillation. The amount of time it takes for an oscillation to complete one full cycle is its frequency. Indeed, the frequency of oscillations is measured in cycles per second, or hertz. Because sound waves oscillate, they also have a frequency. However, their frequency is much faster than your oscillating fan. Generally, people are able to hear sound frequencies as low as 20 hertz and as high as 20,000 hertz, also known as 20 kilohertz. The frequency of sound is what we perceive as its pitch. For example, this sine wave has a much lower frequency than this sine wave. Now, frequency actually gets pretty complicated. I'll be talking more about it in the video on equalizers. But for now, know that hertz are a way to measure the frequency of a sound wave. Time. Audio is a time-based medium. You don't experience it all at once like you do with a picture. You experience it gradually over time. Because of this, precise time measurement is very important in digital audio processing. Everyone's used to the standard seconds and minutes. However, in many cases, these units are too big. When you're dealing with things like the sudden sharp sharp volume spike at the start of the word Apple, a second just won't cut it. That's why, for many plugins and effects, time is measured in thousandths of a second, or milliseconds. By the time you're done with this series, you'll be very used to working in milliseconds. So that's everything I wanted to discuss about the characteristics of sound. Onward! What is mixing? Mixing is the final part of getting a great vocal sound.
where you combine all the audio elements of your project together into one complete whole. The mixing process happens after you've created or recorded all your instruments, sound effects, and vocals. The ultimate goal of mixing is to get all the different sounds in your mix to sound good together, rather than just by themselves. It's about achieving balance and clarity, but also about removing distractions. You have many tools at your disposal to help you achieve this goal. Each tool requires special considerations, which is why I'm dedicating the next seven videos to talking about them. Some of the things I'll be discussing include audio editing, levels and panning, equalizers, compressors, gates, and de-essers. Before I get to any of that stuff, there is one very important thing you need to know, and that is... Number one rule. The most important thing to know about vocal mixing is less is more. A well-recorded, well-performed vocal will already sound good. However, it may need a little extra help to get it to sound great, or to get it to fit into the context of a mix. But why should you use less mixing? Well, the goal is to get the vocal to fit in the mix without compromising what made it sound good in the first place. Further, as vocals are acoustic instruments, they tend to sound weird and unnatural when you apply your mixing effects too heavily, especially if the vocal is the only thing in the mix. Now, there is a place for weird and unnatural. Indeed, throughout the rest of Vox FX, I'll be using the effects mentioned in these next seven videos in very extreme ways to do just that. However, that kind of heavy-duty sound design is not the norm. If all you want to do is make a great yet natural sounding vocal, then go easy on your mixing effects. Anyway, Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more information or have any questions about what I've covered here, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over the equipment needed to mix your vocals. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. VoxFX.